we are in the middle of a drum session. Welcome. This week I'm recording drums with no other than the amazing Krim, the drummer. You might know that guy from playing in bands like Septic Flesh. He also used to be in Decapitated. You might know him from being the drummer behind Bogren Digital's Krim drums. But this week he is here with the amazing Austrian post black metal band Harakiri for the Sky and we're tracking their upcoming album. We're about to do the sound check and why don't you join us and have a look at all the drums, the cymbals and the mics that we are about to use and about to check out. Your chance to be the fly on a wall on a real recording session. That's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. We have already done the basic drum setup and the basic miking, and now we are about to check out and compare a few options that we have because Krim brought a lot of stuff here. We're gonna compare a few snare drums and also a few crash cymbals. So I wanna pass over the mic down to the live room to Mr. Krim himself so he can introduce you to his drum kit, his cymbals, and tell you why he plays what. Let's go. All right, the drum set I'm using is my personal drum set. I brought it all the way from Austria and it's a Tama style classic maple set. Maple because it's a wood that is very versatile, many love it. It sounds great in the studio, you can tune it up or down, doesn't matter. And my setup is quite symmetrical as you see. Everything is on each side, it's like mirrored, so if you cut it in half, you have everything there. Um, the only difference is to my normal setup, I'm playing just one kick drum. I talked with Cola on the phone and he decided to just go with one kick. He prefers to record with one, I usually play with two, but the material is not so complicated, so I figured, let's do it, why not? Um, and the shell sizes, let's check that out. So here are the toms up here, this is a 10 by eight, a 12 by nine, and my floor toms are a bit bigger for extra low end, 14 by 14, and a 16 by 16. And yeah, my single kick here is a 22 by 18 inch, usually have a, a second one, and if we are already here at the double kick section, let me show you my bass drum pedal. It's a custom pedal from Poland called Charge Kopito. And it's a direct drive pedal. I've been using it for many years. The durability is insane. Um, that's why I also call it Polish tank. And yeah, the cool thing is you can either use it as a double pedal or you can split it into two singles. And about the snares, I don't have so many snare drums in my collection, just a few, the ones that I really use. And for now, I want to try this one out. Possibly it's going to be this one. And this is a John Tempesta signature snare, also from Tama. Size is 14 by seven. Again, quite deep for extra beefy sound. And it's a brass shell. Very musical snare drum. You don't have to just hit it hard. Even for ghost notes, it sounds really nice and crisp. I personally like metal snares. And so my second option is this one right here, also from Tama. And it's another signature snare from Charlie Benante this time. That's a steel shell and it's a 14 by six and a half. This one in particular sounds very nice at blast beats because it gives this kind of compressed, really snappy sound. But both are fantastic. Let's see, we're gonna test which one will work. And the skins are Remo. So all of them are Remo and actually all are Emperor. And the Emperor line are double plies. It's, you know, for durability reasons and on Tom's it's pretty common. Um, these are Emperor Vintage, so vintage clears, they're a bit thicker. This is a classic Emperor coated. And even on the kick drum I use uh, a new skin for me, because I always have Power Stroke 3. This one is an Emperor SMT clear with the extra dampening ring, so you can control the sound a little bit better. Alrighty, we have a lot of shiny metal here. Let's talk about this. I'm a metal artist and been using their symbols for quite some time. And it's again, the same symbols that I always use, but I brought all of the symbols I have with me. So we have different options. For now, I wanna try out the Pure LR Custom Series. And these are quite big crashes. This is a 20 inch 
And this one is, I believe, yeah, it's an 18 inch. Both are medium thin. I prefer thinner crashes. They just sound better. We have two 18 inch chinas, two splashes, eight inch, 10 inch, two heights on both sides. Again, symmetrical setup. This height is also the, uh, uh, a really good hi-hat for the studio. Many like it. It's a Bison's 14-inch medium traditional hi-hat. And so we're going to test different cymbal options, in particular the crashes. I also have these guys as an option. Bison's um, brilliant medium-thin crashes in different sizes. We're just going to compare. And if none of this is going to work, Kohle also has a lot of stuff to try out. What I don't want to change, though, is my right cymbal because it's part of my sound and it's a very old symbol. The first symbol I got from Idol. It's an MB8, um, heavy right, 20 inch. They don't make it anymore. I never cleaned it. I really like the sound. It wasn't an expensive symbol, but you know, I just, it has to be in my drum set. Everything else is kind of the same. So really looking forward for this session. Let's make some noise. If you guys want to know more about my drum set and really dive into each detail, you know, with tuning and why I have this piece here on the snare and, you know, all the nerdy topics, there's a link down below. Follow it for the extended version. Let's go through the microphone setup. We're using quite a few microphones today. Let's start with the main overhead pair, and that is a pair of my beloved Austrian Audio OC818s. Fantastic sounding overhead microphones. They give you the precision and the clarity you need, but also the punch of the shells. Highly recommended, you'll hear them in a minute. The main snare microphone here is the MicTech PM something. Still can't, can't remember the name. I usually go for this one, or let me see. Or this one, the SE Electronic uh, V7X. This one sounds a little more beefy, so if I have higher tuned snares, I go for the SE, and if, if I have fatter sounding snares, I go for the mic tech, because it's a little snappier. Then there's another mic below the snare drum, the bottom snare mic, which is a Biodynamic M201. Oh, legendary, fantastic snare mic. Toms are Audix D2, and on the big 16-inch tom, it's an Audix D4. Pretty classic setup. Then we have a bunch of additional spot mics on the cymbals, so on the Chinas, left and right. We've got the SE Electronics SE8 microphones. Again, highly recommended. They're quite affordable. They're very neutral, very detailed, and great sounding small diaphragm condensers. SE Electronics SE8. You can see the right cymbal microphone right now because it is underneath the cymbal. Something I do more and more these days. You get more separation that way, so you can crank the fader a little more of that microphone. On the other hand, you get less ping and less highs, obviously, compared to miking it from above. But I'm using a microphone that sounds great in that position because it's very detailed, very airy and very fast. It is the SE Electronic RN17, Rupert Neve small diaphragm condenser. Very snappy sounding microphone. Great in that position. Then we have the kick drum down here. And we got two mics. I'm not using an outside kick mic for extreme metal. I don't know, I, don't, I simply don't need it. My main mic is an Audix D6 inside the kick drum, but we also have a pre-installed SE Electronics V kick microphone that Krim is using. And that is like, like mounted inside the kick drum, so I couldn't move it. I'm recording them both. We're gonna hear all of the tracks in a minute when I'm back in the control room. And finally, we got two pairs of room microphones. One is up there, like right below the ceiling where things sound a little more washy. It's a pair of very old AKG C, I think 3900 or something microphones. And uh, that is my distortion room mic. You'll hear it in a minute. It's like a trashy sounding room mic. And then we have what I would call my main pair of room microphones. That is like on the other side of the live room behind some gobos. And that is a pair of ribbon microphones, Rode ribbon microphones in a bloom line setting. Sounds beautiful. So these are the mics that we are using. Time to go back into the control room and to have a listen. 
Now we're going to compare crash symbols. As Krim has told you, he brought two sets, two pairs of crashes, both coming from Minel. The way I usually do this is I let the drummer play exactly the same pattern twice to the click. Usually some kind of, you know, uh, crash pattern with some additional hits on the other one and um, for some accents, you know, and then I can switch back and forth between the two. Time to check out some crash symbols. Which ones are your favorites? Have a listen. So which symbols would you go for? Which one would you choose? It wasn't that easy, but let's start with a bigger symbol, with a 20 inch symbol. That was actually quite easy. The pure alloy sounds a lot warmer and fuller, but still like precise and bright enough. And we went for this one. Have a listen. warm and full and the great thing is that's just nothing annoying like in the frequency range here if you compare this to the pies to bisons even if the main pitch of the symbol is lower there are a lot of brighter overtones that make me want to reach for an eq just a little annoying compared to this Just a nice full mid-rangey cymbal sound that's gonna, you know, that's just gonna sit right in the mix. And even if you boost the highs a little bit, it's still gonna sound nice and not like like piercing and, and, and annoying. So that was the main cymbal. That was easy. But then we, I gotta say we actually liked the fast and bright response of the smaller bits on cymbal. which just seemed a little faster and more in your face compared to the smaller pure alloy symbol. And from a lot of drum recording experience, believe me, I know that this second accent crash really needs to sound explosive and in your face to cut through a dense metal mix. So that's why in the end we went for a combination. So the bigger symbol was the 20 inch pure alloy and the smaller one was the Bitsons. And the combination sounds like this. So a great combination of a warm and full sounding main symbol and an explosive sounding accent symbol. Best of both worlds. Let's move on with the snares. As you can see here, we did a lot of test recordings. You can see that here with different snares and different snare tunings. We started with his main snare, which is the Tama Tempesta snare. And we started with a tuning at 250 Hertz. Sounded like this. Sounds nice, but especially on the blast. We felt like we need a little more attack. So we tuned it a little higher from 250 to 260, which sounded like this. That was just a little more snappy, also on the blast. Once we were happy with this, we knew like, hey, 260 actually works. We compared the three different snare drums. We went to my Pearl Free Floating snare drum, also 14 inch by six and a half steel snare. And it sounded like this. Sound a little more hollow. You can hear a lot more of the snare wires, like crang, crang, crang. And to us, it sounds a little tired and just less snappy. 
compared to the Tempesta, which sounds like this. And so we moved on to the third snare, which was the Charlie Benante snare, which also sounded great. Sounds like this. This one has a nice woody quality to it, kind of softer attack for some reason. And yeah, sounds great as well. What we didn't like about it, it was the hoo, hoo kind of ring. No matter how much we dampen it, the ring just got shorter, but never, never disappeared. You always have that hoo, hoo. listen. Don't get me wrong, it sounds great and it has kind of like a special attack. But in the end, we went back to the Tama Tempesta snare because it sounded more controlled, had a little faster attack. It was easy to play and it worked both on the slow parts and on the blast beats. So let's have another listen. Maybe this time with the room mics. Sound check is over and we are very happy with the results. Of course, we tried a lot more stuff, more cymbals, different tunings and stuff, but you know, um, um, a little too much for a video like this maybe. Now I wanna give you a quick rundown of the single tracks, at least show you the most important tracks, overhead, snare, kick, toms, and the room microphones. Let's go. I've done a little rough mix here, but there's basically zero processing and it sounds like this. Sounds nice, right? I just told him to play some random shit for a minute or something, okay? So, uh, yeah, don't focus on his playing right now. Let's go through the tracks. First of all, we got the overheads. Let's have a listen. And I really love how those Austrian mics pick up both the details. You can clearly hear all the symbols, like even the chinas in the back. It's like super transparent, but also the, the, the beef and the punch of the drums. Really nice sounding. That's a great like fundament for the whole for the whole drum sound. Let's move on with the snare. This is our main snare mic. Nice and punchy. Sometimes I do use a little EQ, let's turn it on. Something like this. This is my typical EQ trick for snares where I try to boost the main fundamental note and try to get rid of the next harmonic, the hung. Get rid of this. I actually did a video about this EQ trick. I'll, I'll put a link here somewhere. It's a good video. I actually also did a full snare EQing course if you're interested. Links below or up there or something. Then we have the second mic, the Baya microphone underneath the snare, the bottom snare mic. It's not really important. <laughs> Great mic though. Minus 15 dB. Let's make it a little louder. Nice. Let's move on with the tom mics. Let's solo all the tom mics. He did not play the fourth tom on this take, so I'm gonna exclude that. So this is the raw sound of the toms. And I love it when toms ring out nicely. I hate it when it's just like tick, 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 tick. Very nice. Beautiful. Later in the mix, they need some more highs and you need to reduce some boxiness in the mids. That's what you got to do in the mix. Actually, I've already pre-EQed the toms. I've always, I always do that with my ADT. You can see them. They're down here. My ADT uh, analog EQ. So on the way in, I always EQ my toms. I already like, like push a little bit of the highs and try to reduce maybe around 400, 500, 600 to just make them sound a little more mix ready. But I think they sound nice in the mix.
Listen to the cymbals, how nicely they, they are spread across the stereo field. Very cool. Uh, let's have a look at the kick microphone. So we got the D6 already pre-EQ'd a little bit, but I'm gonna turn that off and we got the SE. So this is the D6. And this is the SEV kick. Back to the D6. And in this case, I prefer the D6. It just sounds a little fresher and a little less boxy in the lower mid-range, just a little more heavy metal. The reason, it's a little unfair because um, the SE has been pre-installed inside the kick drum, so I couldn't move it. But I could find the perfect spot for the Audix D6. So that's maybe the reason. So I'm recording both, but for now I'm only listening to the D6. And because more is more, I've added this EQ. Let's bypass it first. Yeah, that's what you got to do with a kick drum, right? Cutting out some of the low lows, trying to yeah remove some upper bass around, what is this, 160? Adding some click here, and then cutting out the, like, the plasticky sounding very highs. Um, in the mix. Okay, I'm not going to talk about all the single spot mics because that's boring, but you can see we've got China mics, Hi-Hat mics, Ride mic, and a Splash microphone. Uh, let me show you the room microphones. They are here because I have two very different sets of room microphones. The first one is my Rode Ribbon Bloom Line setup behind some gobos at the other end of the room. Sounds really nice. So I use this one to just beef up the drums, the drum tone a little bit. So if we use the overheads and then fade in the room track, let me see. You can just make things a little thicker. And the cool thing is because those um, ribbon mics are behind the gobos, uh, the cymbals are tamed a little bit. So it's a nice effect. They just blend nicely with the overheads. I really want to try out some AEA, that AEA R88 mic, by the way. I've used that in other studios, and uh, maybe that's going to... That's on the list. Anyway, my second pair of room mic sounds very different. It's right under the ceiling, way higher, where the room sounds a little more washy. And I go into... Maybe you can see it over here, this one the Warm Audio MPX preamp. And I've fully cranked the gain and I'm distorting the shit out of them on the way in. Sounds like this. Look at this. And then I'm using an EQ to filter out some of the highs and the very lows. That's without. And the cool thing is, a little goes a long way. So you just need a little bit of that track because it's so distorted and it will sound massive. Let me just pull it up for you without. Impressive, right? And I really love this mic on Tom Parts, and we got a lot of Tom Parts on this Harakiri for the Sky album, like broom, 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, this just sounds amazing. Yeah, try distorting your room mics next time you record drums. It's fun. But this preamp, this warm audio preamp, link below is also special because you can really dial in some like different distortion tones. It's really useful. I've, I've shown it in, in another video. Links below, blah, blah, blah. All right. Now we got to record 70 minutes of 
post black metal. It's a very long album, but I'm really looking forward to recording these drums and also to yeah mixing that album. I really love the band Harakiri for the Sky. Please check them out. Amazing music. Uh, so we're about to do that for at least five days. Please check out Crim's YouTube channel where he does playthroughs and other fun stuff. Check out the Bogren Digital Crim Drums Library if you like Crim's drum tones. There's another link below. Finally, I'll put links to all the drums, cymbals, and mics that we've been using in this video. If you want to nerd out, you'll find all the information below. As usual, if you want to learn more about recording drums, check out my Academy Cola Audio Cult. A lot of links below, a lot of interesting stuff. Thanks to Harakiri for the sky. Thanks to Krim for making this possible. Um, yeah, not everybody wants to be in a video during a sound check, right? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, tell your grandma about it, have a beer with her, watch some heavy metal boom boom videos with her. That's fun. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye bye. <laughs>